Hi, this is your teacher, Barbara Rademacher, and we're going to be adding and subtracting radical expressions, which means we're going to have to simplify them. Because on the surface, it looks like you can't add these. These are not like radicals. They do have the same index, but they don't have the same radicand. That is, 24 and 81 are the radicands. But I'm betting we can break these down and find a perfect cube in them. Let's do it. Let's break down 24. 24 is, I don't know, what is it? 6 times 4. 6 breaks down into 2 times 3. And 4 breaks down into 2 times 2. So that 24 equals 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Look at this. The index is 3, which means we're looking for 3 of the same number. And here it is. There are 3 2's. So what does that mean? It means I'm stuck with red is what it means. All right. It means that 6 is going to stay there. But 24, all right, the cube root of 24 can be written as 2 times the cube root of 3. The perfect cube comes to the outside once, and the number that's not a perfect cube stays inside. All right, let's do this with 81. 81 will break down into 9 times 9. It's a perfect square, but is it a perfect cube? Well, let's see. 9 breaks down into 3 times 3, and 9 breaks down into 3 times 3, and look at this. I have 3 of the same number 3, so that 81, the cube root of 81, can be written as 3 times the cube root of 3. One of these 3's comes to the outside, and this 3 stays on the inside. Okay, now let's go back to the left here. This 2 is on the outside of the radical, so it can multiply the 6. So we'll have 12 times the cube root of 3 plus 3 times the cube root of 3. How many cube roots of 3 are there? We have 12 cube roots of 3, and we add another 3 cube roots of 3, so there are going to be 15 cube roots of 3. How about that? Okay. All right, now, we're going to take the square root of 12 times, well, minus the square root of 48 plus 4 times the square root of 75. We have to break these down. Remember, there's an invisible index 2 when you're dealing with square roots. So we're going to be breaking down 12, 48, and 75 and looking for two of the same number. All right, 12 will break down into 4 times 3, which is 2 times 2 times 3. There are two twos. So 12, the square root of 12, now, see, it's being multiplied by 2, so I'm going to write 2 out here, and then times the square root of 12 can be written as 2 times the square root of 3. Now, I'm going to subtract the square root of 48. 48 is, among other things, you can break it down any way you like, 
um, let's break it down into, because this occurred to me, 4 times 12 is 48, and 4 is 2 times 2, which is a perfect square, but wait, let's finish. 12 is 2 times 6, and 6 is 2 times 3. So now we're going to have 44, 48 rather, equals 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. I'm looking for 2 of the same number. Instead, I have 4 of the same number. But look at this. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 2 is 4 times 3. Now I have 2 of the same number. So the square root of 48 can be written with one of these 4's on the outside and then the square root of 3 on the inside. Whew. Now I only have one more to go. I'll have plus 4 times and then the square root of 75. So let's investigate 75. 75 equals 25 times 3, and you probably already know that 25 is a perfect square. It's 5 times 5. So 75 equals 5 times 5 times 3. And here are my two 5's. So I'll be writing the square root of 75 as 5 on the outside and the square root of 3 on the inside. Now, that's my dog scratching. In case you heard scratching, yes, that's my dog. Okay, I'll have 2 times 2 is 4, right? So that's 4 times the square root of 3 and then we're subtracting 4 times the square root of 3. So these two are going to zero each other out. Let me put the minus sign back though. Now, plus 4 times 5 is 20. 20 times the square root of 3. So our answer is going to be 20 times the square root of 3. Let's go on. Now we're going to be multiplying. 8 times the square root of 6 squared. Ah, this is tricky. Don't let it fool you. This is going to be 8 plus the square root of 6 times 8 plus the square root of 6. I don't know if I said that right, so let me say it again. 8 plus the square root of 6 times 8 plus the square root of 6, and we are going to have to FOIL this. So, first outside, inside, last. I'll have 8 times 8, which is 64 plus 8 times the square root of 6 plus 8 times the square root of 6 plus the square root of 6 times the square root of 6 is what? It's the square root of 6 squared. So we're going to have 64 plus you have 8 square roots of 6 plus another 8 square roots of 6, that's 16 square roots of 6, plus the square root of 6 squared is 6. Now 64 and 6 can be added. 64 plus 6 is 70. So our answer is going to be 70 plus 16 times the square root of 6. These are two different terms. They can't be added beyond that. Now, another one. 
we're going to be multiplying 7 minus the square root of 7, rather, minus the square root of 6 times the square root of 7 plus the square root of 6. We're going to FOIL these, but these are very special first. Let me point this out. Notice that both of the first terms are identical. They're both the square root of 7. So you've got the square root of 7 and the square root of 7 in the first position. You have the square root of 6 and the square root of 6 in the second position. The only thing different about these two is that you have a minus here and a plus here. These have a very special relationship. These are conjugates. So I'm going to rewrite them. When you multiply conjugates, your square root, that is conjugates composed of square roots, your square roots disappear. Watch what happens. If I FOIL these, I'm going to have the square root of 7 times the square root of 7, which is 7. Now, plus the square root of 7 times the square root of 6 is the square root of 42 minus the square root of 6 times the square root of 7 is minus the square root of 42. These two zero out. The square root of 42 minus the square root of 42 is 0. Now finally we're going to have negative the square root of 6 times positive the square root of 6. That will be minus 6. So what we're left with is 7 minus 6. And what is 7 minus 6, it's 1, just plain 1, no square roots. That's because these are conjugates. When you multiply square root conjugates, your middle terms disappear, your end terms become whole numbers, and your final answer will be a whole number. Okay.